Uh, welcome back to Talking Shop. This is Easter 3, so mm-hmm. two weeks after Easter Sunday. Right. Uh, we're taking a look at 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. Great text, uh, getting people focused on their identity in Christ, that they are a child of God, and what it means to live as such. So yeah. uh, like it, subscribe it, but yeah, for now, let's get, to it. let's get after it. Away, spit out my Lord in every way. Yet I'm still welcome in the yard. We are in First John 3, 1 to 7. It's the third week uh, after Easter, the second week after Easter, but Easter 3. Yeah. Um, and we're going through the Gospel of John, or not the Gospel, we're going through the letter of John, First John, uh, as we, you know, see different parts, not every bit of it, or this, the epistle readings are going through that. And so verse 1, right, see what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. All right, so we got a lot in one verse right there. Pretty much you get almost two totally different thoughts. Yeah, he's basically quoting Jesus there. Right. John 16, they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. Right. Well, and the first half, uh, as we're going through... First John, right? He he talks a lot about love, mm-hmm. right? But it's not the way we normally think about love. We say this all the time. In this. It's not the warm and fuzzies, right? Right, exactly. It's 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 not. It's certainly nothing romantic per se. It is uh, much more like love as a as a verb. Yeah. What does it look like to love the neighbor when the neighbor is unlovely? That sort of thing. Uh, yeah. Like, so see I like what that quote. Huh? I like that. What does it look like to love when your neighbor is not lovely? Yeah, there you go. Or lovable. Yeah, that's good. See what kind of love the Father's given to us, and it's that kind of love. Mm -hmm. Uh, When you were unlovely, he loved you, regardless of it. Well, we were still sinners. Yeah, Christ died for us, right, Paul. Uh, And and he calls us his children. Um, And that's not a mistake. It's not happenstance. It's a promise of, of your what? Romans 6. Of your baptism, right? <laughs> yeah. You have been called. Yeah, I didn't want to steal your thunder. That's all right. <laughs> and it's John 1, too. All who did receive him, who believed in his name. He had uh, the right to become the children, children of God. God. Exactly. And so it's this idea of you're called, and you don't have to wonder if you're a child of God because you've been baptized. Right. It, God, it, God has done that work to you. Right. He called you. Right. And it's not like, well, I don't know, is it, am, I, am I his child today? Am I, am I good am I, enough? Am I good enough to be his kid? It's like, no, you're born of God. Am I, therefore... I going to pass the fruit inspection? Right. <laughs> yeah, checking the fruit, right? Yeah. It's, uh, and, and no, and so it's just, it simply is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, your children are your children. Whether they're behaving the way you think they should or not, they're still your children, and, and yep. this is this is this calling, and it's a, it's a great, uh, and, and I love it. The end of it, and so we are. You know, he, he said so, and so we are. Um, and then we get this interesting sentence, this interesting piece in here. Uh, you know, the, the the reason why the world doesn't know us is that it didn't know him, I mm-hmm. uh, didn't understand him, and this this is going to eventually echo into his gospel. Right, especially first, well, mm. John one, which is that same piece, right? right. That you just read, mm. uh, and just this idea that the servant isn't above his master either, right? Um, don't don't be surprised when people don't like when you talk about Jesus in truthful ways, mm-hmm. when you talk about what he who he calls us to be in ways that you know that don't fit with cultural standards, yeah. Because uh, culture, cultural standards wax and wane and come and go and, and all that stuff. Well, it's only that don't expect to be understood. Right. Yeah. 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 Producer Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, yeah. In, in this expectation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, verse two. Oh, go ahead. Muted something. Um, so I, uh, our there was a house immediately next door to our church building, and. Uh, the first couple of years, I had the privilege of ministering to this elderly couple, and their daughter lived across the street. Grown daughter, she had just retired from the school district, and her parents had a long history in town. They were well-known in town. They were 
kind of leaders in our community. Mm -hmm. And so she would tell the story of when she was a teenager, and she would go out, and her dad, before she left, would always say, remember what your last name is. As kind of a, hey, you are part of our family, mm -hmm. and you represent our family. Yeah. And you are, like, don't forget who you are. Right. And so act in accord with how our family operates. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. Remember who you are and who's you are. Yeah. Right. Who, who, yeah, remember who's you are uh, and, and act like it because you do represent something bigger. I think that the whole cultural thing of, of well, it's just me and it's my choices and it doesn't right. hurt anybody else or even if it does really doesn't matter because I have the right. Right. And it, it's, we behave in this way because we are part of this family. And this is what it means to be part of a family mm -hmm. is that we don't do X, Y, and Z. Or we do do other right. things. Right. That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am your God. You are my people. I am the God who delivered you out of slavery. This is what it means for me to be your God and for you to be my people. Therefore, love you the Lord your God. You yeah. shall have no other gods before me. Yeah. Right. Well, like, th yeah. this is what it means to be my people. This is what it means to be children of God. Well, this is first article stuff, right? This is this is first uh, first commandment stuff because we, we get it all out of whack, right? The, the the created forgets that it's created and tries to be creator, right? Uh, and, and because we want to be God, right? Right, in and of ourselves. I mean, this is yeah. Adam and Eve in the garden. This is every version of this story ever right Romans right. One, yeah yeah i mean on and on and on, on it's us wanting to define ourselves rather than accepting the fact that we are created mm -hmm. and defined by that creation defined by the one who has created us and i think this is obviously leading into verses four or six which we'll get to in a minute oh yeah for sure for sure yeah well so let's keep going verse two Beloved, and again, that translates out beloved, but it, it's that agape word. Again, one, right. those those of you who are loved by God in an agape manner, right, uh, in that self-giving manner, we are God's children now. Uh, love the definiteness of it. And what will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. What does it mean to be like God? Jesus. Yeah. Well, we don't know entirely. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't know exactly what it is, but it is definitely a physical and spiritual, right? Uh, you know, your soul and your body reconnected, recreated, right. and in a new heavens, new earth, uh, in 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 the resurrection. Yeah, this is a great opportunity, I think, to talk about how we are so word based. So scripture based in that we don't go beyond what scripture says, right? We, we can make all sorts of philosophical mm -hmm. projections and we can speculate on how many angels can dance on the head of a pen, right? But, but none of it matters. Right? No, a, none of it matters. Yeah. And B, well, scripture doesn't say that. Right. Right. Like we, we have other Christian friends who have, doctrines built on logic it's a great logical answer we just don't have the scripture to support that and so we we don't go that far with them right yeah because we let the bible interpret the bible right and if the bible can't interpret the bible then we probably shouldn't be heading down those paths anyways because we're probably wrong I mean, it right. makes a good paper makes a good argument but it's probably wrong yeah right and so uh we know what we know by revelation not by speculation right Right, and what is, and it's so funny, like even talking about end times, the Bible says more about what it's, like heaven, right? Mm -hmm. It says more about what it's not <laughs> yeah. Than, yeah, than what it is. It says a lot about what it's not. Yeah. It says very little about what it actually will be. Yeah. Um, other than you're going to be okay, and I'll be exactly what Jesus intends for it to be. Um, yeah, yeah. Verse 3. Do you think that see him as he is, do you think that that's a, almost a, that intimate knowing of him, like you'll, like that in the intimate sense, like you'll know him. Do you think that's? That, that and I think uh, transfiguration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. John's got the transfiguration in the back of his mind because um, he saw him 
as he truly was on that mount, um, fully in his glory. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're definitely getting a the seeing him as he is piece. You're definitely getting a transfiguration piece in there. Um, we saw it, guys. Yeah, and from just for a moment, we saw it, and you're going to see it too. Yeah, but, but I think that's uh, a good tie back back to those first verses. Or the world doesn't know him, right. and they they aren't going to know us. But but we know him because right. we are his children. Right. Yeah. And so when he comes back. Then we're going to see everything unveiled. Yeah, yeah, like like Gideon when he sees the army around him, you know, just for that brief moment, you know, God says, "Hey, by the way, you're not alone." Yeah, just see it for a minute, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Verse three, and everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as He is pure. I don't like that translation at all because it, <laughs> it's the word "holy," right? Yeah. To be made holy. It, it's almost. It's. I would think it's almost even better. Everyone who thus hopes in Him, is is set apart for Him. Mm-hmm. You know, set apart for His work. Set. Up, this this ties back into you know the the texts that talk about from Ephesians two, where you know He's separated. He's created good right. works for right. you to do, uh, that sort of stuff. Thus, purifies as as He is set apart. Yes, He is holy. Right. It, and I've been talking about this with my people a lot lately. Holiness is a proximity thing. Yeah. I, right. The closer you are to Jesus or the people of Israel when they were in the, the wilderness, the, the tabernacle was later on is at the center of their, their encampment. And, and so the presence of the most holy God is in the center of their midst. And they are holy by proximity to that. And in the same way, we are holy by proximity to Jesus because every Sunday, or hopefully every Sunday, or at least regularly, take and eat the true body of Christ. By proximity to Jesus, you are thus made holy. Mm-hmm. Um, you are you are set apart now for the opposite of what he's about to get into in verse 4. You know, he's talking about everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Yeah. So be who you are, is what we've already covered. Um, don't do the opposite of that. Right, because you are in proximity to Jesus. He's made you holy. Live as and the maturity is passive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean that that's the reality. It, it's a mm-hmm. passive reality for us. I think it's real easy if you don't understand what it means to be holy to uh, substitute that word for moral. Right. Yeah, and I, I think probably in a lot of our people's minds, that's when we talk about being holy. What they hear is be moral. Mm-hmm. That's what I preached this weekend in the Ephesians 2 passage with um, your, we almost get the sense of Jesus in some some traditions where he's a Santa Claus figure. Um, he's trying to make you nice and not naughty, and he'll only take you in when you're nice, and he'll give you good yeah. gifts when you're nice. But in fact, it's the opposite. When you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. He took you when you were at your worst and made you in proximity to him, made you holy. Well, and it, I mean, that's what it says, right? It it's not making yourself holy that does it. It's hoping in Christ mm-hmm. outside of you. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the hope in Him that makes you holy. It's, it's, it's uh, right. Yeah, very very passive. Well, it's like what you preached on this week. If you if you were perfect and you were already good, you wouldn't need Him. Mm-hmm. Right. right. So why would He come for someone who wasn't a set? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah we, we can't we can't fix ourselves. It's a it's a, it's a brokenness that runs deep. Yeah. Yeah. Only those who are sick are in need of a physician. Um, exactly. Uh, verse 4, everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices antinomianness, right? And uh, anti-lawlessness. Yeah. Uh, because sin is lawlessness. And and I think the key on this one is the idea of practice. Uh, you can't ever get away from sinning. Right. But it's a whole different thing between making it a practice Mm-hmm. Be a part of your lifestyle, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, John is real clear about that, and in, in, in this letter, we're really tough on that kind of uh, choosing a sinful life, but you know, kind of deal. And he says this: what isn't what it should, isn't what it should look like as children of God. Yeah. Well, and he's combating that those proto gnostics who basically say it's all spiritual, right? And that's what we were talking about before translation. Heaven's not this just a spiritual thing life in the clouds life in the clouds right heaven is wherever jesus is right 
the, and the new uh, heavens and the new earth are a going to be a physical place. It's a restoration. And we will be earth. like him. Yeah. In some way, shape, or form, it's gonna be, it's gonna look like him. Yeah. yeah. Good. That practice of lawlessness, uh, we'll get to again in a, a minute, but um, it's not the it's not. Hey, you need to cut out all of the sin of in your you need to stop doing naughty things it's the the yeah. wallowing and the reveling in in sinfulness it's, yeah no that's right it's it's, it's like the it's, celebration of it right it, it's not the the one time it's the ongoing continual sin mm -hmm. the habitual sin that he's addressing here yeah yeah, poet. Oh, right, the right. doing of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, but the it's all, it's the habitual doing of it. Yeah. 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 Uh, verse five. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. Um, again, another one of those great texts. We're hearing it more and more, kind of culturally. The line you know, Jesus. He said He gets us. He gets you. Right, yeah, the Super Bowl ads, and everything yeah. else. Um, and wow, I, in their defense, I get what they're trying to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, they're, they're trying he, to make Jesus relatable. Yeah. Right. He he takes you as you are, but he doesn't leave you as you were. Right, right, right. Because he has more for you. Yeah. Uh, and and sin actually dehumanizes us. Right. It makes us less than what God has actually created us to be. Um. Verse 6, no one abides in him, keeps on sinning, and no one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. So he continues this argument about, you know, as a child of God, you look different. You act different, right. you have different priorities, right. different hopes, different dreams. Uh, you treat life differently, you treat death differently. And you know, it, it, it shades everything that you do, right? Um, and, and it allows you to live in him rather than living in yourself and it allows you not to live in the practice of sin yeah. and notice verse 7 he calls them back to what he's already told them they are little children right. because you're God's children don't let anyone deceive you whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous and I assume that he is referring to Christ um, yeah exactly and the side the the Dikaya Sune, right? The Dikaya is the righteousness of, of God. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to practice righteousness? Are we talking morality here? Oh, for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously not. I mean, it, 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 that would go against the rest of what is happening, right? This practice of righteousness is, is doing those things that your neighbor needs you to do. Yeah. Uh, whatever that may be, whatever that looks like. Um, and everybody's neighbor is going to be different, and every opportunity is going to be different. It doesn't make you right before God. It is the practice of the ongoing sanctification of the saint. But yeah, I, mean, I think you're going to tie that back into verse 1, right? That you are called children just as you are declared righteous. Mm -hmm. Right? And so live in who God has made you to be. Yeah. Are you going to continue to sin? Right? Well, that's... Uh, what last week's or the week before chapter one or chapter two? Mm -hmm. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us, right. right? So, he's not saying, Hey, you have to stop sinning, but he's also saying, Don't wallow in your sin and mm -hmm. make it a practice and make it a habit and be a habitual sinner, yeah. but but yeah, also it, like knock it off, too. right? Yeah. Right, yeah, there's kind of all knock it off. You're the worst. Yeah, <laughs> Dan's the worst. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's that I was thinking like the the pig in the mud, right? Yeah, you, you may have sinned, but don't don't lay in it. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, don't don't make this your home. Yeah, uh, keep going. Yeah, and you may, you're probably you're going to fall in it again, but keep going, and find find a way through it, and and make the right decisions that lead you to a life or a. a a, a walking with God that looks like what it looks like to be a child of God. Yeah. Well, it goes against that whole idea that society has nowadays that it's whatever is right for you is right. 
you know, whatever mm-hmm. you think is right and is right in your life, that's the way that you should live. And yeah, this this translation says instead of uh, instead of let no one deceive you, it says don't let anyone divert you from the truth. You know, it's not it's what you think is right is not what's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because and, and that's the idea that people have these days. That if it's right for me, then that's that's how I should. Then it's right, yeah. you know. Because yeah. we're not defined by our own agendas. We're defined by a Creator mm-hmm. who's made us, and and He says, "No, that, this this is who I've made you to be, and you're you're my child." Yeah, that's back to that first commandment of we want to be God. We want to decide what's right, right? But we're not God, right? You don't get to make that choice. Yeah, it's not yours to make. No, that's good. It's outside of you. And if I'm preaching this, I'm going back and forth to this children of God thought. You know, it's saying that kind of over and over and over again uh, as as a refrain. You know, and you can use all the different ways we can wallow. You know, you, you can all the different ways that you can dwell on somebody sinning against you. Yeah, and and how people go decades, <coughs> decades. Worrying about this sin that somebody did to them, and they've yeah. long moved on. Yeah, you know, and that's just that wallowing. Yeah, or worrying about that one sin that you committed that one time, or that one action that had bigger effects on somebody else, and you just sit in that, and it's warm, yeah. and it's yours, and you should let your diaper get changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Children of God. Yeah. Yeah, good, and I think you can keep coming back to that over and over again. And there's, there's, you're going to have stories of that from your congregation that will fit. Obviously, you don't want to call anybody out specifically yeah. per se. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not a really great thing to do normally, but you can go general yeah. with it and go. You know, so many of us struggle with a general version of whatever that is that's happening in your congregation. Yeah, yeah, good. We're definitely closing with uh, M five ninety four. God's own child, like gladly say it. Are you? Yeah. How, how would you not sing that? This week? <laughs> if your whole theme's going to be how we're children, children of God, of God how are yeah. you not going to sing God's own child like gladly yeah. say it? <laughs> well, there you go. And we even gave you a hymn this week. So there you go. There uh, you go. Good. Anything else? We're good. Uh, sorry. You know, you heard a voice probably a, a couple of times on our video. That That's my son, Daniel. We, we failed to give him a spot at the table, and I apologize for that. We shouldn't have had him at the table with a microphone. Um, but been on uh, before. Yeah, you've been on before this, right? <laughs> Good. But otherwise, like, subscribe, uh, tell us what you did with it, and God bless your preaching.